Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets, and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, there's really only one story, but this one story has a big ripple effect as it goes through, as we start to look at different layers of this onion. So, first up, essentially, you can now buy Bitcoin at CVS, 7-Eleven, and Rite Aid. And you would think that this type of story, uh, together with the one that we just saw yesterday, where PayPal and Venmo are going to roll out crypto buying and selling, you would think that it would have a huge effect on the price. So why don't we take a look at what's going on in our space? And we can see that there is no change pretty much whatsoever. Maybe a couple hundred dollars here and there, but these are two huge stories and not really a big push. So right now, Bitcoin sitting below 9,700. There was a big, massive jump of 0.9% uh, in 24 hours. So wow, watch out. Ethereum, 0%. Tether's Tether, and XRP is XRP. 18 cents and nothing really has gone big up. However, Chainlink, look at this, 9.2%, one of my holds, that's fantastic. And going down, down, nothing really, maybe a little dash here and there. Zcash up 10%. I'm sure you'll tell me in the comment section why that is, but really not too big. So that is what is going on. I would expect XRP to make a bigger splash, especially with this story that just came out. Uh, Ripple hired Elon Musk to help get XRP to the moon. I wanna say thanks to Andrew Tran for uh, letting me know about this. So this is a quote from Brad Garlinghouse, he says, well, not literally to the moon, but we love his innovation, talking about uh, Elon Musk, thinking and we're betting that his ideas will take XRP to infinity and beyond. And here's a little uh, backdrop, uh, an image for the uh, new Ripple consultant, Elon Musk, and Ripple CTO David Schwartz in their first XRP moon brainstorming session. So congratulations to them. And it also states, despite the struggling price of XRP, of which Ripple is the largest single holder, Ripple has recently received a $10 billion company valuation after a $200 million Series C round of investor funding. How do you think we can afford to hire Elon, said Garlinghouse. Just wait till you see what else we have up our sleeves. So that was a fantastic article. And if you did not laugh at that article, you have no soul. That was hilarious. I love these types of things. This is from XRP The Standard. And of course, that is all satire. Uh, but uh, a nice uh, bit of levity in this uh, in our market in this situation. So thank you again to Andrew Tran for uh, letting me see that. Gave me a little chuckle. Let's move on. So before we get into the big stories, um, I got to tell you that the email that I put out, Dan Digital Asset News at Gmail, um, usually it's for like business inquiries, but people every so often they'll like uh, send me an email and that's great. But if I answered everybody's email, I would have no time for my other businesses. So I'm just going to remind everybody that these are just for business inquiries. inquiries. Uh, but if you have a question and um, I can answer it, I will definitely do so. So uh, here was a question from Randall Montgomery. He states, hello, I was watching your videos on YouTube. I want to buy some and think I know enough and what's going on. Uh, but if you could tell me, you know, how you do that and where to buy and everything else and what's safe. So this leads me into uh, my next point, which is there is an Excel spreadsheet or a Google spreadsheet that I link in every single one of my videos in the description. And it looks something like this. And I put this together because I was having a lot of problems with all the different options that were out there. And the thing that I want to know was because people kept telling me about Coinbase. This is when I use Coinbase. And they said, hey, the fees are like outrageous compared to XYZ, blah, blah, blah. So I try to put together the exchanges and the services that I use and just kind of, you know, slammed it all together about what is going on. So uh, right now, Coinbase and Coinbase Pro, I don't recommend those. And it's because of the different outages that they've had. I mean, when you have four outages in three months, when Bitcoin fluctuates, what's that mean when uh, the big bull run comes. Are you gonna shut down so I can't cash out? So they gotta fix that first before I'll come back. And uh, of course you are uh, free to do whatever you want to, it's just that's what I'm doing. And then also uh, they have uh, teamed up and sold the analytics platform to the um, DEA and IRS. So I'm gonna probably stay away from there for a little bit. Not that I have anything to hide. Again, I've been paying taxes since I was a 15-year-old kid. It's just that, you know, we've done the KYC, we've done the AML, I got my 1099s, everything is there. 
So I just don't see why, how many more steps we have to take. Uh, I just don't like it. Anyhow, so I compared the, the Coinbase fees, which are pretty, which actually are pretty steep. And I break it down by a funding account, like how much it costs to fund if they do ACHs or wire transfer. Um, if you want to use debit or credit withdrawal fees, I got to fill those in as I've only got uphold right now. And if there's a dollar cost average automatic option, I break it all down. So I've got Coinbase, Coinbase Pro, and of course people are right. I mean, the fees are extremely uh, reduced from Coinbase to Coinbase Pro. So if you're doing using either of them, you know that if you have a Coinbase account, you can definitely get a Coinbase Pro. It just transfers over, no big deal. And then uh, Gemini. Uh, here's the fees kind of similar a little bit better and then someone just told me about um, it's called it's not called Gemini Pro it's called um, active Gemini active trader account so if you email them apparently uh, you can uh, get an active trader account and the fees are much reduced so I just emailed them today I'm waiting to hear back and I'll let you know if that's actually true or not or someone just pulling my leg but it seems reasonable I've got uphold and then of course on some of these um, like Coinbase and Coinbase Pro, I don't have an affiliate link anymore. So you can just click there and, and see why I don't recommend them anymore. Gemini, this is an affiliate link. Uphold, you can sign up here. It's not an affiliate link. Um, Abra, no affiliate link there. There's a new one I just found called Simple Swap. Simple Swap IO. And I, and I got this from my man, Digital Dave at Crazy for Cryptos. And uh, I just wanted to get Theta. I wanted to see what, the, you know, I want to just hold. It's the small amount of Theta. You know, not like anything spectacular. It's not even, you know, near a couple hundred bucks, but I just wanted to see it. So what I did was I went to Simple Swap because I can't get Theta anywhere else. And it's pretty cool because you don't have to sign up or anything. You just put your information in. Uh, you send over uh, however much you want as far as like Ethereum or, or Bitcoin or whatever else. And it'll give you, and there's like over 300 different coins you can use. So it's pretty awesome. I was skeptical, but I trust Digital Dave because he's never lied to me as far as like his videos. And they're always awesome. And it worked out pretty well. So I did that, got a little theta, and it just worked. So uh, there is an affiliate link there if you want to sign up. Uh, Kraken, I'm still taking a look. KYC, not me, still taking a look. And Cash App, I don't really use, but uh, I hear it's great. But the fees are 1.75% uh, as far as I've seen. And also, uh, to do your own research, you can just click here for the fee chart, and it gives you all the fee charts for all these different ones that I've actually evaluated. And uh, that's it. So if you're looking to um, save some money, uh, for all these different fees and whatnot, take a look at this and uh, hopefully it'll help you out. All right, let's break into today's top story. So first up, you can now buy, well, actually only up, you can now buy Bitcoin at CVS, 7-Eleven, and Rite Aid. Uh, Bitcoin ATM operator Liberty X now offers Bitcoin purchases at the United States' most popular convenience and drug stores. And again, this is um, also building on yesterday's story. So you can you know, by apparently you're gonna be able to buy Bitcoin at 7-Eleven, CVS Pharmacy, Rite Aid through kiosks or through like these ATMs, and this of course was building on yesterday's yesterday's story. Excuse me, uh, when PayPal and Venmo uh, were talking about rolling out. Now, this story was just from sources. It wasn't an official announcement. However, there was a lot of good information as far coming out as far as why it could be legitimate. One of those was, and I talked about this yesterday in yesterday's video, uh, Cash App. 50% uh, of their revenue did not come from transactions, did not come from people using the actual Cash App for just uh, payments. 50% of the revenue came from people buying Bitcoin. So when you have a monster like Cash App and they're like, yeah, that's what we're doing and it works out pretty well, why wouldn't PayPal and Venmo get into that same game? It'd be stupid of them not to actually. And I'm surprised it took them this long to get there. So when I see something like this, I'm like, okay, makes sense. And then, you know, you have the sources, but then also, this was from the Daily Hoddle, and they talked about PayPal's hiring crypto and blockchain experts amid reports of a wide-scale support for digital assets. And it says here, companies hiring a cryptocurrency engineer, and this is for India. And they're also uh, also hiring a blockchain research engineer who work in San Jose, California. So I took a look at their job postings, actually, and this is from PayPal Jobs. And if you put in, like, the first one, it was uh, cryptocurrency... Can't remember what it was, but what is put in cryptocurrency and search, and there's no jobs. And you can go back, and I actually looked at all the different job postings in India, and that job has already been snatched up now. So that is not available. But if we look at blockchain and search throughout all the locations everywhere, well, actually, yes, they're all looking for a blockchain research engineer. So you could say you can make the case like, well, maybe they're trying to develop their own blockchain and their own cryptocurrency. 
Yeah, true. But I mean, if you want to just get in the game and just, uh, you know, double your revenue like cash did, why wouldn't you just offer Bitcoin? A heck of a lot easier than creating your own blockchain, your own cryptocurrency, hiring all the engineers, all the different development teams, get everything out there and then try to promote it. That's a lot of work. Just get in where the getting's good and sell Bitcoin. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Anyhow, so I thought that was interesting. But back to the story. Um, I think this, when I saw this, I was kind of confused because I'm like, well, that's great. Now we have these uh, Bitcoin ATMs and it's a pretty good little posting. It's a it's a GIF or a GIF, however you want to say it. And, you know, you know, you can use their, download their app. You can find all the different uh, ATMs in your area, which is pretty cool. And then you buy it at the kiosk, you scan it, and then you... It's, it's only you can pay between 20 and 500 bucks. 20 is the minimum, $500 is the maximum. And you can get Bitcoin right there. Here's the question I had to myself. I never carry cash. I don't know if you carry cash. Um, I'm not a big cash person. Everything is debit. Uh, everything is a swipe. Everything. I mean, if I was even more high speed, I would uh, get the uh, Apple Pay or Google Pay or whatever. Actually, I have an iPhone, so it would just be Apple Pay. But I don't really use uh, f uh, money too much. Um, so I thought, well, who's going to use this? You know, because I mean, these types of retailers, uh, you're looking at uh, CVS, uh, you're looking at uh, Rite Aid, uh, you're looking at all these different places like, you know, that places would go to for like, I think, kind of like an older generation as far as pharmacies, uh, picking up medications, whatever else. I mean, I have, we have Walgreens here in Texas. I'm sure there's a CVS somewhere and everybody uses it, right? But I don't know how many people are going to, you know, roll on up there and uh, put 20 bucks in and uh, to get Bitcoin, especially if uh, the transaction fee is five bucks. So that is 25%. Uh, correct me if I'm, my math is wrong, but if you spend 20 and $5 is the transaction fee, it's a lot of, that's a big fee. So I thought, well, that sucks. And then I thought, well, who's there? I mean, if, if you, it's like an older generation who wants to go there and buy Bitcoin, well, you can only buy it to 500 bucks. So I thought, is that really a big thing? I mean, and then 7-Eleven, of course, everybody goes to 7-Eleven for whatever reason. But I thought to myself, you know what? This is good for two reasons. One, it's great for the unbanked. If you don't have the ability to get a bank, if you have problems with whatever and you cannot open a bank account, then sure, this is a great opportunity to be able to store your money in a safe place and like a store of value of Bitcoin and, you know, probably will appreciate at some point. So I thought that was awesome. I also thought it was great because of marketing. And I'm going to ask you a question. I've asked this before. Uh, so, if, you know, this might be new to you, may, may not be, but I don't know where you're at in the world, but where is the best hamburger in your city? Uh, like, again, I don't know where you're at. I don't know if you're in India. I don't know if you're in Europe, in Australia, uh, America, Canada, Mexico. Where is the best hamburger in your town? And just think about it and like, oh, well, it's Broncos or it's Billy's or it's whatever. Uh, this place has a great whatever, whatever. Um, I don't know where you're at, but I can tell you that whatever you just chose, it's probably wrong. The best hamburger in your town is McDonald's. I'm going to tell you why. So I didn't say the best hamburger, best tasting, highest quality. Obviously not. That McDonald's doesn't is going to fit in that category. But the best hamburger as far as like the amount of hamburgers sold and revenue generated is definitely McDonald's. And the reason why is because there's a McDonald's in every corner. They're all over the world, they're global, and they take up so much real estate and advertising uh, that it's hard to ignore them. So I thought this would be awesome, especially for people who are going to 7-Eleven, CVS, Rite Aid, and Bitcoin's there. You know, it's just, it's just there in their face all the time, just like McDonald's in that junky food that they have. And also, I thought it was pretty cool because, you know, like PayPal and Venmo would also have it right in people's faces. So it's like it's like a constant marketing ploy. And that really is what drives adoption is people just have to see it. Um, in sales, we say that you have to see some between seven and 10 times before you actually buy it. So in this situation, I think it's a, it's a big winner. And then we're going to talk about an article with Mike Novogratz and he lays out something I never thought about and I'm like okay that is a brilliant reason why this is actually a good thing so so next it states um, these 20,000 new buying centers and they're gonna put 20,000 new kiosks or no ATMs uh, it already adds to this company Liberty X's 5,000 Bitcoin ATMs that the company has established across the US since it launched in 2014 so in six years they had 5,000 Bitcoin ATMs so now they're gonna add another 15,000 this year 
That's my question. I mean, can they quadruple their ATMs that quickly? I mean, is that even a possibility or is that just like we want to do this or we have this ability? I don't know if they have, you know, 15,000 extra ATMs just sitting around in a warehouse waiting, waiting to be deployed or if it's going to happen over a one year, three year, five year time frame. No idea. So if you have any uh, information, please put that in the comments section. I'd love to know the answer to that. And finally, the big problem that I see is the service requires a phone number for verification and charges an 8% conversion fee including a $5 retail service fee. So in light of the launch, Liberty X will waive uh, conversion fees at select retailers until the end of July. So I thought, well, well, that's awesome. You know, you you take off the 8% conversion fee uh, and you only got to pay five bucks, but still, it still kind of sucks because I mean, that's kind of high. I don't know how many people are going to roll in there with, you know, I guess a hundred dollars, you know, 50 bucks, something like that. Not too bad, but uh, it's still kind of a, a high type of fee but if you want to get access to bitcoin and you have cash and you're unbanked and whatever else and you think this is easier sure why not so what i like to do is i like to take a look at the actual website itself to see what it's all about this is liberty libertyx.com and you can click right there to find locations like i know in uh, el paso and houston there's a ton of them so looks out pretty well uh, you can learn more uh, right here which is just the basic info but i looked at their they're actually kiosks or atms see that's nice what i talked about as far as marketing because i do a lot of marketing and sales and advertising for my other businesses this looks good. When I see this, it kind of draws my attention to it. And I see, I think when people see this big B, they're like, and it says buy Bitcoin. Hmm, Bitcoin. I've heard about that. Isn't that that thing, you know, three years ago that was uh, everybody was talking about? And now, now it sounds like it's coming back. That's interesting. And then they then they go to their PayPal account. Huh, there's Bitcoin. Look at that. And then they go to another 7-Eleven or whatever. And like, damn, Bitcoin's there too. Bitcoin's all over the place. You can't escape it. So I think that's actually a pretty good thing. And then here's all the locations all the way throughout. And then they have like a help center where they just have like a text-based thing about what uh, Bitcoin is, what which is, you know, whatever. But my big question was, well, what about KYC? Know your customer and the Anti-Money Laundering Act and all those things. What do we have to do? Can we just go there, put our money in, and then get, uh, let us have Bitcoin and some kind of account that we uh, create? Because that'd be awesome, right? Then we want to do uh, go through all these these hoops. Well, not so fast, because we ask Liberty asks for basic ID verification, essentially the information off your driver's license. This includes name, address, and date of birth. We check these against public records to make sure you're a real person. For security reasons, ID photos are required to be submitted to the Liberty X mobile app. And uh, it's also able to accept a valid U.S. government driver's license or state ID card. So you're not going to get away from an, an anonym, anonymity. I think I said that right. Or being anonymous. Uh, that just doesn't uh, exist <laughs> these days, it seems like. So um, that is that in a nutshell. So again, I was thinking about it. This whole observation of this... ATM, this kiosk, and bringing people in. I thought to myself, well, if you're going to put it at Rite Aid and these and these types of um, um, pharmacy places, who is that going to attract? Who's it going to, you know, bring people into? Not me. I don't care. I'm, I'm, and I think maybe you are probably using some type of exchange on the internet on your phone and you're, you know, doing deposits via ACH or whatever you're doing. You're not going to carry around cash too much. So who is this for? And this leads me into my next article. Mike Novogratz predicts Bitcoin to 20,000, says institutions realize crypto revolution is inevitable. And I'm just going to read this, this first couple paragraphs. And it says, uh, ex-hedge fund manager Mike Novogratz says institutional investors see cryptocurrency revolution coming. And I think we know that because of all the different institutions that are already here. The founder of the full-service crypto merchant bank, Galaxy Digital, says he thinks eight out of 10 institutional investors will be invested in cryptocurrency within the next five years. Notice he said cryptocurrencies, not Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies. So again, I don't believe that there is one coin to rule them all. I think that's foolish. I think that there are different things out there that can do a lot better job than Bitcoin can. Go ahead and put your comments because uh, you're probably already typing anyhow, but that's what I truly believe. So he had an interview with finance magnates and this whole section below here is just about the whole thing. And I don't really care about that. I want to see what he really, I mean, because they just take snippets. What I want to see is the actual article and what he said and put it all into context. So um, this was 
the Finance Magnets um, interview with Mike Novogratz. And they talk about Galaxy Digital. Uh, they're working to make crypto more accessible to a key group of investors that are often overlooked in the crypto world, Gen Xers and baby boomers, who together control nearly 80% of the wealth in the U.S. So if you're a Gen X, if you're a baby boomer, you're listening, uh, you guys and gals are the main drivers of the economic force right now. And you can see in this nice little chart here, fantastic, great, you got a lot of wealth. Unfortunately, I see this little purple one called the Millennials. Not so hot. So, of course, they're going to go where the money is. Makes sense, right? So, Novogratz believes that it's important to bring financial advisors into crypto because the bulk of the wealth is America. in America is held by 58-year-olds, held by Gen X and Gen Z, not millennials, like we just talked about. When it comes to crypto, these Gen X and baby boomers invest, investors have not rushed in yet. We don't think they're going to rush in. Instead, we think they're going to need to be educated before they're willing to gain exposure to the crypto space. So this makes sense. And this I think this is good as far as a marketing aspect as to what those 58, 60, 65, 70-year-olds are going to see when they go into these pharmacies to pick up medication. What's that? Bitcoin. I've heard of that. What's going on with that? Oh, it's the best asset class ever, and it's beat everything uh, that's been out there. Maybe I'll have to talk to somebody about that. Or maybe because I have money, because I actually use it, I'm going to go buy it right now. Who knows? I don't know. So moving on. In November 2019, Galaxy created two Bitcoin-based funds named the Galaxy Bitcoin Fund and the Galaxy Institutional Bitcoin Fund aimed toward the wealth of America. Wealthy individuals between 50 and 80 years of age who may have been wary of investing in crypto in the past. So that's great. Obviously, go to where the money is because that makes everything easier. It's, it's a lot harder to uh, squeeze water from a stone when there's no water. So moving on, it says Bitcoin is still a pain in the ass to buy, Mike Novogratz said. And when I said that, I'm like, no, it's not. It's super simple. But you have to understand, I have a problem. And that problem is I only think about me and how it relates to me and how it's easy or hard for me and i have to always take a step back and go wait that's not how it works there's a lot of other people they have different problems they have different skill sets than you do so you had to think about that and i didn't think about it until i read Novogratz's statement he says it's hard to buy bitcoin especially if you're a 65 year old retiree it's a lot easier to call your financial analyst and say, hey, I think you should have some of this Bitcoin or, hey, I think you should have some of this or have some of that, some kind of cryptocurrency because I hear it's going to be, it's going to pop off and be fantastic and great. So that makes sense because I try to tell my mom about Bitcoin <laughs> and that did not go well. And uh, just to have her buy it and things like that, it's just, it's a steep learning curve for somebody. And I can understand now why. Uh, Grayscale has people coming in, uh, institutional investors, and just going. You know what? We don't deal with the, we don't want to deal with the, with the custodial services and all that different stuff. We'll pay you a premium. Off we go. Moving on. In February this year, CoinDesk reported that Galaxy Digital laid off 13 people, roughly 15% of its workforce. At the time, a former employee told the publication that the reason for the layoffs was that Galaxy had hired people expecting the digital asset market would develop quickly, and it just didn't happen. Novogratz said, to be honest, it's, it's taken a lot longer for the institutions to get here, and maybe I was just naive. It feels like, he did say, it feels like this year, talking about 2020, there's been a big sea of change, mostly driven by the fact that with corona, uh, the coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever you want to call it, the policy response has been such crazy money printing, both in the U.S. and abroad, that people are looking for alternatives. And I read that, I'm like, damn, that's pretty good. Finally, something positive came out of the coronavirus. So for every downfall, there is actually an opportunity, and uh, I can see it now. Moving forward, he states, and this is the last part, this is a real moment for wealth managers to look at crypto as an asset class. He states the buyers of cryptocurrency right now tend to be the younger generation, and it's more of a business-to-consumer player, B2C. Financial advisors are professionals who have the critical role of protecting and growing wealth for a huge swath of the U.S. population, which is about 20 to $24 trillion being managed by wealth management. Imagine that, $24 trillion. If you take, I don't know, 3 to 5% of that and go, look, uh, Pete, we got to really... Uh, play a hedge here because we don't know what's going to happen with the U.S. dollar. They're printing it like crazy. It's strong right now. I just don't know what's going to happen in the next, oh, I don't know, one, two, three, five years. So what I'd like to do is get you into another type of opportunity. 
It's called Cryptocurrency Digital Assets, and uh, it's the best asset class ever. It's beaten everything out there. And I think if we hedge our bet, just put a small part of your portfolio, I think we can do pretty well. What do you think? Pete will probably say, yeah, that sounds like a pretty good idea. And uh, if you just take 5% of that 24 trillion, what do you got? Now, if you take a look at gold, which is around, I don't know, 8 trillion, 9 trillion, 10 trillion, somewhere around there, and you take a little chunk of that, maybe 20% of gold's uh, worth or market cap, where are you at? You're a pretty high place. And that's why I think Bitcoin, digital assets, cryptocurrencies, um, there's a lot of room to run. And it only makes sense. Anyhow, he states, this is a real moment for that community to look at this as an asset class and really understand the best way to implement it as asset location, allocation. And I put a couple notes here, so I kind of skipped over because I was riffing a little bit too much. When they talk about here, they say, you know what? Um, this is something to get into, like a you know a hedge, like I talked about, the 2024 trillion. Um, these these institutions, they are stubborn. They are super stubborn. They it's like they just don't want to get in. They need assurances. They need someone to hold their hand, lay out the red carpet. But I got to tell you, if I'm an asset uh, allocation manager, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, what can I do for my clients? What can I do for my clients? Well, if I want to look at Bitcoin, this was put out by Thomas Lee from Fundstrat, and I'm looking at the year-to-date returns. I'm, granted, this is a little bit older. I think this was on May 8th. But Bitcoin is outperforming everything so far right now. And maybe it's not uh, as great so far. But if you look at 2020, pretty good so far. If you look at 2019, 92.2 compared to the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, Russell 2000, gold, and everything else. It beat the pants off it. But that's just two years. So what about the other years? Well, we take a look at yearly candles we can see there's a huge amount of growth here and of course there's a couple years that were down years sure but who doesn't but if you just take a look at what happened from 2011 actually 2010 9 we can go back that far uh, if you could you're looking at a huge massive gain and um, I can only see it going up so if I am one of those hedge fund managers I would probably want to look into this this is just me and then as far as institutions coming in, I mean, look, we've already got Fidelity with their $7 trillion. They're going to be custodians for a new Bitcoin trust. You've also got uh, Novogratz's uh, baby, Digital uh, Galaxy Digital and Backed. They're also going to offer this type of service for solutions for institutions. A new one just came out, Nomura. They're going to partner and uh, launch digital, digital asset custodianship. And of course, you got the big guys. Well, not that big, but big in our space, Grayscale. And uh, this report was just put out in April. They're actually, uh, their asset center management are now 3.7 billion. It's grown by 1.5 already. And the majority of their investors came from institutions dominated by hedge funds. 12 months ago, roughly the same thing, 79% to 88%. So not too bad. You've also got TD Ameritrade. They're dipping their toes in. They've got one trillion assets under management. And they got a regulated exchange for cryptocurrency trading. And then you got one of the old guards, uh, Paul Tudor Jones, as of May 8th, states he will put 2% of total investments into Bitcoin futures. So the future is bright. And I think that things are here. And I believe that things really are coming together. But hey, I could be wrong. So let me know what you think in the comments section. That would be interesting. Do you, do you see it actually moving this way? Or do you just think it's a big, you know, to do about nothing? Let me know in the comments section. And that is it for today's video. So I want to say thanks for sticking with me. And also, if you got time, I'd like to say thanks to all my supporters. So if you don't know, there's a join button underneath. Um, it's not like you have anything special. It's just like a tip, really. And for my level ones, they pay a couple bucks. So I say thanks, guys. And ladies, I really appreciate it. Level two, they pay a little more and I give them a shout out. So thanks to All Right Soft, uh, Wen Mullet, myself, who else? Dave Plummer, Grant Sharman, Bruce Wood. That's a good name, Bruce Wood. Baking Benjamins, Noel Flippin' Vegas, Martin Lewin, Michael Ralph, William Howell, Crazy Crypto Canuck, uh, Tessie Ryusaki Positive, Fire Swing Golf, JC Durex, Crypto Veritas, John Miller, The Office, Elmerg, Michael Jeffrey, The Kell Show, Mage Research, and our last five, Terry Prospery, XRP Carolina, Whatever, AE, and our new one, Hero Soap Company. That's a good one. And then lastly, uh, of course, we talked about my email, Dan Digital Asset News which is great for business inquiries. Uh, if you if you send me a question, I might answer it, I might not. I'm pretty busy. I've got a lot of things going on. 
And uh, also if you get something from Dan Digital Asset New at Gmail, it's a scam. So uh, just delete it or write him back and tell him what a jerk he is for trying to steal your money. And that's it. So, hey, thanks for sticking with me. Really appreciate it. And uh, I will see you on the next one.